73 million years ago, a tyrant appeared in North America. An apex predator with very few rivals before or since. The late Cretaceous king of North America, Tyrannosaurus. However, this wasn't the Tyrannosaurus we know, but something much older. Something that only very recently has been brought back to the light. Or should I say, finally, described in 2024. The tyrant before T-Rex, Tyrannosaurus macrayensis. Tyrannosaurus macrayensis, or T. macrayensis for short, is a new species of Tyrannosaurus from southwestern North America. Not to be confused with its cousin T-Rex, this is a species new to science as of 2024. While T. macrayensis shares the genus name Tyrannosaurus with that of T. rex, a new study reveals that these in fact were two separate animals, for a number of reasons. For the longest time, Tyrannosaurus rex was the only species in the genus Tyrannosaurus. And for as nearly a long time, there have been a string of controversies on whether or not certain remains represent distinct animals, or should remain lumped in T-Rex, like Alamotyrannus and, most famously, Nanotyrannus. This time, however, after 100 years of studying Tyrannosaurus, we finally have an accepted, distinct species with T. macrayensis, originally teased for publication back during 2019, but then COVID rolled around and delayed its publication. But don't worry, it's better now. In all seriousness, with a decade's worth of work behind the study, along with new science and evidence from recent years to add to the paper, the revelations have been astounding to say the least. This is a huge discovery, and not just because T. macrayensis is nearly 12 meters or 39 feet, but because of the massive implications it has for the genus Tyrannosaurus. The study revealed key differences between Tyrannosaurus rex and Tyrannosaurus macrayensis. These differences are subtle, and being from the same genus, naturally the two are very very similar. But they are key differences nonetheless, with T-Rex having a bulkier, boxier skull with more pronounced brow ridges, while T. macrayensis has less pronounced brow ridges and a slimmer, slightly narrower skull. And unlike its cousin, T. macrayensis wasn't found in the Pacific Northwest like Montana or Canada, but instead was uncovered in the American Southwest of what is now New Mexico, in the Hall Lake Formation. Not only that, but something even more remarkable has come out of this. Tyrannosaurus macrayensis is 5 million years older than T. rex, with isotopic analyses setting the time frame of this species within 73 to 72 million years ago. This changes not only how early Tyrannosaurus appears in the fossil record, but the very evolution of Tyrannosaurs as we understood it. For decades, it was thought that the giant Tyrannosaurines like Tyrannosaurus and Tarbosaurus originated in Asia with animals like Zhujiang Tyrannus, and it was thought that they migrated into North America 68 million years ago, where they would integrate into the ecosystem with the disappearance of their distant relatives like Albertosaurus. However, the publication of Tyrannosaurus macrayensis completely flips the idea on its head, with the authors of the study suggesting that large Tyrannosaurines instead found their origins in the American Southwest, being older than Tarbosaurus and around the same age as Zhujiang Tyrannus, suggesting that T. macrayensis represents a point when the North American Tyrannosaurines split from their Asian cousins, achieving gigantism in North America first, before migrating into Asia. This is not only supported by T. macrayensis being older, but the occurrence, if not prevalence, of Tyrannosaurs in southwestern North America, from animals like Glythronax, Teratophonius, Pistaiverser, along with remains of Tyrannosaurus being found from those same regions. What's more, these Tyrannosaurs existed at the same time as other Tyrannosaurs in the north, the Albertosaurines and Despletosaurines. But don't show 
any signs of range overlap during their presence in North America, with Tyrannosaurines being more contained to the south, while Albertosaurines and Despletosaurines occupying the north. This lack of overlap between Tyrannosaurines and their northern cousins is not only stronger evidence for a southern origin for T. rex, but it seems the disappearance of northern Tyrannosaurs 68 million years ago coincides with the dispersal and eventual rise to dominance of giant Tyrannosaurines in the very twilight of the Cretaceous. There isn't much evidence for Tyrannosaurines competing Albertosaurines. As mentioned, the range of the two groups didn't overlap when they lived in North America. Instead, it's more indicative of a faunal turnover, or an event marked by the decrease or disappearance of one group, followed by another to take the roles they left behind. And it's generally the consensus that Tyrannosaurines like T. rex filled the gaps left behind by the extinction of other groups of Tyrannosaurs, rather than taking it from them outright. By the time animals like Albertosaurus and Despletosaurus had vanished from Montana and Canada, Tyrannosaurines were able to successfully spread north and eventually into Asia. What's really interesting about this study is that it not only suggests that Tyrannosaurus achieved gigantism or giant body size in the American Northwest, but potentially many of the other classic Cretaceous giants, especially animals like Triceratops. The Tyrannosaurs and Ceratopsids, or horn dinosaurs, were thought to have existed in a state of co-evolution, where two organisms would evolve in response to being closely associated with one another, extending as far back as the late Jurassic and intensifying during the late Cretaceous. Anywhere you can find a horned face, you'll find a tyrant not far behind, both figuratively and sometimes very literally. Tyrannosaurus macriensis itself lived alongside Sierraceratops, a type of chasmosaur closely related to the famous Triceratops and the giant-headed Taurosaurus. It's likely that this horn-faced herbivore was a favored prey item of this species of Tyrannosaurus, but there's more to it. Sierraceratops, while closely related to Taurosaurus and Triceratops, is much older, living 4 to 5 million years before its famous relatives. Seeing a pattern here? And it's suggested that as Ceratops and other Chasmosaurs began to migrate northward, Tyrannosaurus' distribution was shaped by the distribution of migrating Chasmosaurs. And as a result of these herbivores being a key food source, this relationship would eventually give rise to the more specialized giants like Triceratops and Tyrannosaurus rex. That being said, it's important to keep in mind that the classification of the species has been met with skepticism. With many paleontologists being fairly critical with the dating of this animal, since Tyrannosaurus fossils are typically found in strata dating to 68 to 66 million years ago. There are also concerns on whether or not the differences between T. macriensis and T. rex are due to ontogeny, or stages of growth, instead of speciation. For now at least, even with these concerns taken in mind, the consensus is that T. macriensis seems to be a stable classification, although being part of a very popular genus, especially one as popular as Tyrannosaurus, the amounts of eyes on this discovery could certainly cause some rapid rebuttals and responses. After all, Tyrannosaurus has had a long history of lumping and splitting species, with Tyrannosaurus rex often being treated as the solely accepted species. So naturally, there are going to be some doubts from experts. Whatever the case may be, the publication of Tyrannosaurus macriensis has presented an important discovery for the grand natural history of Tyrannosaurs. Not just as a new species, but a brand new piece of the Tyrannosaur puzzle. <laughs>